Hi, this is Chris Matten from PricewaterhouseCoopers reporting from the Risk Mines Conference in Amsterdam in 2014. Uh, and this morning I'm joined by Clayton Herbert. Now, Clayton, I think you've been asked by ICBI to be the sort of unofficial reporter or observer, <laughs> as it were, at the conference. That's so, really Chris. what was your highlight yesterday? Um, I really liked Jonathan Shaw's um, session on uh, cybercrime Cyber right. or cybersecurity, or he called it yeah. information insecurity. Yes, indeed. That was, uh, I and what was, was your really key takeaway from that? Um, that it's not a technology issue, mm -hmm. that it's uh, an issue for everyone, and everyone needs to take ownership and uh, speak in common English risk rather than technical IT speak. Right. And that's yeah. the only way you can actually deal with the with the issue holistically. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And and what so in general yesterday, what were the key themes? What were people talking about? Well, it was an actually a very interesting mix. Um, there was a good mix of current regulatory issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was a good mix of current uh, risks and developments, um, and particularly uh, Lord Turner's uh, discussion around the housing uh, uh, bubble. Mm -hmm. And uh, but there was also um, coverage of some some of the future issues that are emerging that people need to be aware of, and that's what I could take back to my organisation and make sure that we've got our radar out looking for these types of uh, and, and what were those future issues? issues? Can you pick on a few of those? Well, I mean, there was obviously uh, the issue around. Um, uh, cyber security obviously mm -hmm. was, was one of those um, and also the development of um, uh, as I say that you know what might come out of the housing market and mm -hmm. come down the track there what we should be looking out for um, there was also a good session on and I need to look, refer to my notes so Please, yeah, <laughs> notes there um, I think some of the uh, the operational uh, operational risk was mm -hmm. a uh, Another one there in terms of how that's shaping is very dynamic um, and probably more so than credit and market risk and those types of things. Right. <clears throat> and it really was starting to saying, well, you know, what we need in terms of capability and skills within a risk function mm. in the future is going to keep moving and shaping depending on the emergence of these Absolutely, operational yeah. risks. Yeah. So there, was, there wasn't actually a lot of discussion on credit or market at all. I mean, other than the sort of macroeconomic type of stuff around housing. No, that's yeah. right. And I think the, the, the take out was that whilst we need to continue improving models, etc., mm -hmm. that they're fairly well trodden paths. Mm -hmm. and, um, and whilst we need to continue to improve those areas, it's, they're fairly well sort of understood the challenge, the issues. Mm -hmm. And to some degree, your business actually controls those risks. I mean, you underwrite those things or you you enter trade, so you have the control, mm -hmm. um, whereas some of the other areas are basically driven outside of your control there. It's a lot of the operational risk. A lot stuff. of yeah, the yeah. operational risk, so yeah. your inherent risks are continually shifting with, say, you know, you know cyber security, mm -hmm. for example, it's what's happening outside your organisation that's driving, you know, the challenge, mm -hmm. not necessarily what you're doing yourself. Right, right. Um, so that was, I thought, uh, an interesting take out. Mm -hmm. um, what about some of the softer stuff? They think there was quite a bit of discussion about risk culture, and yeah, there was, and that's been around for quite a while. But it mm -hmm. is actually trying to take some of those principles that everyone sort of well understands and say, well, how do you, what, what do you actually do in mm -hmm. terms of uh, from a risk officer's perspective to um, to to make that real, to be able to provide the board comfort that you know you actually are driving a positive risk culture within the mm -hmm. organisation. How do you measure success? How do how, you know how does that develop? Um, so it was a good. We had a good conversation uh, yesterday around that sort of making and that more any real. key takeaways that you would sort of say, right? If you're a CRO, these are the two or three things around risk culture that you might want to take away. And think yeah, I mean, I think there were um, two or three things. I mean, firstly, it needs to start from the top, and mm -hmm. a lot of the issues around, you know, who, you know, who do you approach? promote, who do you recruit, do they have the right type of uh, approach to risk management and they take um, uh, you know, uh, culture seriously mm -hmm. and so that was very much the tone from the top. Um, but it was also um, uh, a lot of conversation around consequence management. Mm -hmm. So how do you react to and, re and respond to um, people even if they're the highest performers in your organisation from a financial perspective? But if they've transgressed and, and you know, your reaction needs to be decisive, strong, consistent. Mm -hmm. um, and that drives that positive message and culture throughout the organisation. So um, they were a couple of the key, the key points that I'd certainly uh, take away. Okay. Um, I think the other uh, key uh, pearl that I sort of found in yesterday's um, uh, conversation um, actually came out uh, from uh, a gentleman 
by the, uh, uh, I'm just trying to remember his name now, it was um, Stuart Gray out of... Oh, from um, Standard Life. From Standard Life. Yes, yeah. And, um, his <coughs> remarks on risk appetite, I thought, risk were appetite, really insightful. They yeah. were, they yeah. were. And um, I know as a CRO, I'm challenged by my board and my risk committee. So, mm. well, how do you measure performance against risk appetite in other than a binary way? Yeah. You have or you haven't complied with your appetite. And he came up with that spot about, you know, there's uh, the, the, the risks you like. Yeah. And, um, so it was the snog, marry and avoid. Of that's the right, it was. That, yes, exactly. Yeah. But in, in, in those risks that you like, you actually set an operating zone. Yeah, the active zone. The I active think he zone, yeah. that's yeah. what he called it. Yeah. And you measure and report as much as not taking enough risk within yes. that, or being outside of the active zone yeah. and the downside, yeah. as much as the upside, which mm -hmm. is very, I thought, uh, uh, a, a very um, plain English way of yeah. explaining it because you know, that was one of the key highlights for me as well. That's that right. Yeah, you know, so. so it's not sort of risk avoidance. You mm. sort of actually, how do you maximise performance within an appetite? Right. How do you optimise your risk appetite? So yeah. I thought that was a really useful takeaway for me. Yeah, no, good. good. And, um, and uh, what the other key messages were sort of uh, for me was also around the need to be agile and, and uh, dynamic and open to change within your risk function as well. Mm -hmm. And we are faced with a whole raft of changes, be that regulatory change, be that shifts in the operating model, which is another uh, key topic mm -hmm. that sort of drove through uh, the first day as well as mm -hmm. yesterday. Um, you know, shifts in emerging risks, you know, we t spoke about operating uh, operational risk before. Mm -hmm. And what that says to me is that your risk organisation and your risk agenda needs to be dynamic and evolving right. and, and and you so you need to have um, uh, the capacity and the capability to be looking forward um, you also then need to shift your agenda and be and shift your resource and your capabilities to respond to those emerging issues or those changes so mm -hmm. um, that tends to be not what we do we tend right. to be a bit reactive and driven yes. by the regulator yeah yep. And so we need to be on the front foot, a bit more take control of the yeah. agenda, mm -hmm. be a bit more forward looking. We need to be able to shake out capability and resource to lift the head up off the desk and mm -hmm. actually look forward and, and anticipate um, those changes and how the, the risk function needs to shift over time. Great. So is this your first time at RiskMinds? No, this is my third. Your third? Okay. Yes, I was here last year and prior to that I was at the last risk mines at Geneva. Oh, so okay, that's a few years ago now. Yeah, yes, that's right. Yeah. One last question I have to ask you, being a Brit and, and you being an Aussie, was <laughs> how much you enjoyed Shane Sutton's uh, presentation well, on that was my team, low <laughs> team TV and how we beat you Aussies in the cycling. No, that was my low highlight for <laughs> yesterday, having to sit through a session of uh, um, of how the Brits sort of knocked off the Aussies. And that, the fact that, that it was an Aussie that helped them do it. Yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> that just made it worse. So, uh, but anyway, we had 76 years ahead of, you know, before that. So there you go. Everyone has their day in the sun. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Clayton, thank you very much indeed. It's been a real pleasure talking to you this morning. Yeah, my pleasure.